no special training, just be at the fight. I'm ready to back up everything I'm saying, and I'm through talking. Ali, the greatest. This poem tells how it feels to be as great as me. Uh, disclaimer, y'all. Um, nothing in this video was meant to uh, tread upon or to take away or to, um, what they say now online, bash. Nothing in this video is, in, is intended to bash or to um, throw salt or dirt on the great legacy and the great man we know as Muhammad Ali, a.k.a. Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. Okay? Now, was Ali the greatest boxer of all time? In my opinion, no. But uh, to me and a few others that I've spoken with, he is, if not the greatest, one of the greatest showmen, one of the greatest champions, one of the greatest just people at heart that we've ever seen, um, you know, on TV or in the media, because his um, his legacy, his his spirit, is just transcends so many countries, so many eras, and it, and it forever will, you know. It transcends, I think, even the mundane human experience. Um, I know the angels will be glad to accept the great Muhammad Ali. And he's great because of what he stood for, his politics, his humanitarianism, or his humanitarianship, his heart, his character, his giving, his warriorship, his pioneership. He was a pioneer in MMA, y'all, if y'all didn't know. Um, back in the 60s and 70s when I guess modern day 20th century MMA was being sort of played around with or um, being you know tickled with Muhammad Ali was one of the first ones to have uh, um, bouts and um, against different um, artists and combatants in different arts um, Ali was doing it Bruce Lee was doing it, uh, Helio Gracie, or excuse me, Senior Gracie, I think his name is Helio. But anyway, Ali is giving, y'all. Do y'all understand that later in his life, Ali, it was hard for Ali to keep money in his pocket because he gave so much in the millions to causes that he believed in, to causes that he supported, to the NOI, to many other causes, man, to children, to fighters, to the whole, to the whole planet, y'all, to the whole world. And I know Ali trademarked his name, and whenever you know you use Muhammad Ali, like especially the, one of my favorite video games, Fight Night, you know he gets paid a certain amount in the millions just to be put on games and things like that. But as fast as he got it, from what I've understand and from what I've read, he gave it away, y'all. True humanitarian. Do y'all know that Ali at one point in time was was welcome to other countries when USA when America wasn't. Y'all know how Dennis Rodman and those and those other fellas have been going to North Korea and doing um you know policy talks and um I guess peace talks if you want to call them. Ali was doing that back in his heyday. He was doing it with Russia, with um Saudi Arabia, with many other countries when they didn't even want to look or have conversation with the United States of America. Ali went in the USA stead, a country that for a long time rejected him and you know called him the n-word and uh, because of the uh, because of the hue because of the pigment because of the melanin in his skin Ali was also a pioneer in hip-hop y'all rap did, did y'all know that um Ali like I've heard artists such as the Jizza and many other artists say that Ali was one of the pioneers and remember y'all Ali used to spit out those rhymes and uh, you know, spit of raps, I guess you can call it. You know, he's a poet and he didn't know it, as he used to say. Ali was also the first to make a million for a boxing fight, for a boxing match. And he helped Joe Frazier become, you know, one of those first men to do that as well. Ali, I think, y'all might have to double check this. Ali was the first to win the Undisputed Heavyweight title three times. But double check that. Ali was not only a great inside the ring but he was great outside the ring as well and I was speaking to a young man the other day I said dude man you don't even know how much Muhammad Ali did for you you don't know you can't even begin to imagine what Ali Muhammad Ali gave up for you and the dude said what what the hell Ali ever do for me he ain't do nothing for me and 
you, you gotta just understand that those people don't understand and y'all hopefully understand the depth and the multitude and the meanings of, of the prior phrase what you know what Ali has done so much for us uh, great people in general y'all do tons of work for the good of humanity in so many different ways on so many different levels Ali was a man constantly constantly at work Cassius Marcellus Clay he's young he's handsome they know it he's a poet a prophet and many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world not only with boxing but in a multitude of fields Ali got together with tons of other people Ali supported and donated to a plethora of people and causes behind the scenes Ali released a musical album daggum Sam Cooke I think produced it Sam Cooke helped Ali produce and create an album I don't know where if you can find it on um, you know iTunes or Amazon or online but Ali has an album y'all so check it out Ali represented the cause the trials and tribulations the plight of downtrodden people especially melanated people Ali championed the cause of people who did not have a voice or who were afraid to speak or for people who chose not to speak. Muhammad Ali, I could describe him best during the, even the 60s, was beautiful. You saw him on television, there was no one more beautiful. You saw him walking down the street, he was a beautiful thing to see. What a phenomenon. You had to see him, even if you pulled against him, you, want to be a, you wanted to be a part of it. He moved around the ring, he had style and class, he was tall and good looking. Everything you'd want from a boxer, wrestler, football player. And to be honest with you, he belonged to the arts because he had poem, poetry, he had it all. Ali himself was the people. And this, this is how you are loved, y'all. And subsequently, this is also how you're hated by the world. Misunderstood, misinterpreted. But Ali is often imitated, y'all. He's often admired. And there are so many great things to say about Ali. There's so many, so many great things to say. Ali was born Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. I think he was um, named after some type of freedom fighter. Um, some type of freedom fighter or abolitionist. But Ali's from the great Louisville, Kentucky. He has a museum there. And like he said... Louisville, Kentucky is the greatest place on the planet because he's from there. He used to say stuff like that. I think the saying he had a hard chin, mm, you could say that, but he was something greater than a chin. Something greater than a chin. He had a wheel like I've never seen in, in the ring ever. I've never seen again. Now, we all know Ali wasn't perfect. You know, Ali had uh, many um, setbacks in his family life with his wives with his children, um, you know, with his health. And we all have character flaws. But so many people strive to be like Ali because of his character strengths. Yes, like he was a man of great countenance, y'all. When, when I think about Ali, to be honest with you, I think about an angelic human being, you know, s somewhere on the level of an angel or a saint or, you know, a Mother Teresa or or a yoga, a Buddha, a, 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 a Jesus of Nazareth, a, a Christ-like human being. I am the greatest. Some of my folks from down here in Sharika went out to his funeral um, recently. And even, uh, it was only uh, a few states away because, you know, uh, Kentucky's down here in the SEC, baby. You know what I'm saying? Southeastern Conference. I'm knocking out all the and if you get too small, I'll knock you out. And even though we live only a few states away, I think even if we were on the West Coast or in the Northeast, I feel, think, and know that some, that some of my folks will still go because they made that vow years ago that when he transitioned, that they would go. Me personally, um, I poured out some spirits, some spirits, i.e. some liquor for Ali. I got together with some of the members of the L team some of my bros, um, a few of my co-workers, and we said a prayer. Now, this may be too much info, but Ali meant that much to people. As a matter of fact, um, I didn't even bring up the prayer suggestion. I, we just got together, got talking about it, poured out, you know, some spirits or whatever, some liquor, 
said great things, but some some other folks suggested a prayer, man. We even said a prayer, man. It was a beautiful thing. Ali meant to a lot to so so many people, y'all. So many people, and he will forever mean a lot. Ali made boxing cool again. Like he said back in the 60s, he was the savior of boxing. He showed mercy, but he also showed aggression. Muhammad Ali, you are truly a gentleman and a scholar. Muhammad Ali, you, like many other greats, live far beyond the grave. You live in our imagination, in our hearts, in our fighting, in our thinking, in our warrior spirit. Rest in peace. Transition well, Mr. Ali. We love you, man. We love you. And we love Bosi. So what I'm going to do when I get out of boxing is to get myself ready to meet God because my plane might blow up. Don't planes blow up in this country sometime and crash? Don't people die every day? Uh, not okay. every day. It's a scary thing to think that I'm going to hell to burn eternally forever. So what am I going to do? We I'm taking such a, I'm explaining what you asked me a question. You ask me questions, I can't just answer like that. When I get out of boxing or when I'm through, I'm going to do all I can to help people. That's why I'm here with Johnny Walker. Here's a poor man came all the way to America. Here's a bunch of boys need some money, and somebody is calling me to help them. God is watching me. God is God. Don't praise me because I beat Joe Frazier. God don't give nothing about Joe Frazier. God don't care nothing about England or America as far as your wealth. It's all he is. He wants to know how do we treat each other, how do we help each other. So. I'm going to dedicate my life to using my name and popularity, helping charities, helping people, uniting people, bring people bumming each other because of religious beliefs. We need somebody in the world to help us make peace. So when I die, if there's a heaven, I want to see it. So it just scares me to think that I'm going to die one day and go to hell. I'm on an airplane that might blow up. I'm always traveling. And to go to hell and God is going to judge my soul. The police, I might kill people. I might rob people. The authorities might not catch me. The FBI, Scotland Yard might not catch me. But when I die, somebody is watching me and keeping count. And I can't get away. And I'm going to burn forever and ever and ever. I'll go to heaven. So what am I going to do when I'm through fighting? I only have 16 years to be productive. Get myself ready to meet God and go to the best place.